Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink and this is my card for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. And if you're interested in the challenge and want to play along or just want to know what it's all about, I always link to it in my blog post, which will be linked directly below the video in the description. So for today's card, I am using the My Favorite Things Cool Cat Stamp Set and I stamped the main cat that I wanted to use twice onto some um, Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And then I stamped the pillow as well and I used Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. And then I'm coloring it in with my Copics. Now I get asked a lot why I choose uh, the 80 pound. There's 80 pound and there's 110 pound weights of this cardstock, both of which are fabulous for Copic coloring. Honestly, it's personal preference. The 80 pound is obviously a thinner, lighter weight cardstock, which means it's not going to absorb as much of your Copic marker inks, um, which to me is somewhat, unless you're doing like large scale artwork, it's not as big of a deal. However, um, the drawback to that as well though, is because it's thinner, it is a lot easier to oversaturate your images. And then that's when you'll start to see bleeding outside the stamp lines. So if you are new to Copics or still wanting to experiment with blending or it happens to you a lot where your images, you keep finding that the Copic color is bleeding outside the stamped image, I highly recommend the 110 pound. I also use the 110 pound for bases, like my card bases. I've been getting asked that a lot lately as well. Um, fabulous for that. I use that a lot. Um, I use the 80 pound lately with my Copic coloring mostly because I just, I have quite a bit of it on hand. But I do have to remind myself, even though I've been using these markers for over 10 years now, I still, when I'm using 80 pound, have to remind myself that I need to use a lighter touch and be aware that, you know, the colors are going to seep out. So that's my thoughts on that anyway. I didn't see any point kind of explaining the coloring because I did pretty basic coloring. Um, simple colors, simple simple. <laughs> um, I will have a image on my blog post with the exact colors that I used, but I just used um, an R14 and R02 for the pillow and then a several grays for the cats. And I colored the cats the exact same because I'm going to use one on the outside of the card and one on the inside. And then once I was done coloring, I had this Copic opaque white still sitting here from my last card and decided to use that to add some highlights because it just gives it that little extra something. And then I'm just using a little marbleizing tool to add some little dots to the cats here. And then I actually used it just to add a little bit of like highlight to their ears, just to make it stand out a little bit more. Um, I find that using other tools is a lot more easy than the actual like brush that comes in that little Copico opaque white container. And then once I was done with those, I just set those aside and I'm using, I'm applying this to the card base itself. I'm just holding the chunky herringbone stencil also from MFT over my card base, just kind of on an angle. I didn't bother taping it down. And then I just quickly scraped some Wendy Vecchi um, white embossing paste over it. Didn't do it perfectly because I didn't want it, you know, perfect. I wanted it kind of messy. And then I quickly went and washed my stencil and palette knife off. And then I had let this sit to dry and then um, finish the rest of my card. So I used one of these stitched Circle Stacks Dynamics to die cut some MFT Summer Splash cardstock. And then I used one of the little banner dies from the Blueprints 29 Dynamics, which I figured just fit the sentiment I wanted to use for this card. <laughs> so I die cut that from some dark gray cardstock, and then I treated it with my anti-static powder tool. And then I stamped the sentiment with Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing Ink. And then I'm using Detail White Embossing Powder to coat the sentiment, tap off the excess, and then I'm holding that piece of cardstock with my reverse tweezers, because otherwise I'm going to burn my fingers. And then I melted that with my heat tool. So to adhere everything, I'm using foam tape to adhere my um, little pillow and the cat to this die cut circle and offset the cat a little bit because I figured I wanted to place the sentiment um, vertically here, which is not something I do. I see it every once in a while when other designers do it and I'm so, I guess OCD is the word, how I, you know, place things and that, especially sentiments. It just... It kind of goes against the way I think to place them not straight. <laughs> but I was like, ooh, this would, this could work. I, I could do this. So I did. <laughs> so I used foam tape to adhere the sentiment. And then I went through my stash and found I have these old packs. I won't have links for these. I'm sorry. They're, I don't, I'm positive they're not available anymore. 
Um, one is an old basic gray pack, so that's definitely not available. And then these other ones are old My Mind's Eye packs of enamel dots. I never get rid of my enamel dots because you never know when you might just need a certain color, which today was perfect. So I was a little more um, free with these and added a few extras because, yeah, they're all like retired products. But I just adhered several enamel dots around the card just because I kept everything so simple with just white on white. And then to finish off the inside of the card, I'm going to adhere that second cat I colored. And then I inked up the sentiment I wanted to use with that same intense black ink. Stamp that onto the inside of the card. And then I'm going to adhere uh, the cat into place. And I can't remember if I mentioned, but I used the coordinating dies for this set to die cut those all just to save me the time and effort. And that finished off the card. So quick and simple for today. And like I said, I will have a link below the video to my blog post with links to the color challenge, the supplies used, all that info will be in the description box below the video. As well as at the end here, I'll have a link to a couple other videos I've done not too long ago using embossing paste and whatnot. So check those out if you haven't seen them. And thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you all next time. Bye.